Hello, sweet friends. Welcome to Late Night with Liz. Tonight we are going to be discussing, is there really a nurse shortage? Spoilers, no, not really. They've kind of just manipulated us into thinking there was in the media and kind of making it a guilt trip into like nurses so that they should stay like, oh my gosh, there's not enough of you. So you need to stay. And we're going to talk about it today because I have a lot of big feelings about it. Maybe you have a lot of big feelings about it. We're going to be going through all of it today. Hopefully it's therapeutic for all of us and also a good time. We're going to be going through some research articles that I've looked at to kind of just get the different angles. Obviously I'll be sharing a lot of my opinions, but we should just go into it saying that they have been saying that there is a nursing shortage since before I was a nurse and I have been a nurse for well over 10 years. So that's what we're diving into today. Hello, everyone who is watching live. Welcome. Welcome. We have a good little crowd here. Um, thanks for being here. If you are watching on the replay, wonderful. There will be timestamps in case we go on tangents, but you should just listen to the tangents because they are fun. Let us see. We have nurse Scott here. Hello. There's been a nursing shortage since before I was a nurse over 30 years ago. Yes, absolutely. Um, Lauren Kelly said, personally, I think it's real multifactorial. Oh, I agree with you. It is very multifactorial. We're going to be talking about some of those factors today. And if you have any insights into what might be causing it, then we can look at those as well. Happy to discuss. Um, hello, Maricel. Hello, mama nurse. Um, the second opinion, we finally have a better channel name for her. It's appropriate. So this is Rachel. If you have any questions and I'm not answering them, you can yell at her. Basically, that is her role. Wonderful. Hello, Rick. Uh, Mama nurse says they will never have enough nurses. And that is very, very, very true. Uh, Jerry, hi there. Love your channel. PNS Fundamentals 2 starts tomorrow. Well, thank you very much and good luck. Uh, how you get through fundamentals is you remember that you don't want to fail it or you have to take it again. Same exact mentality as nursing theory. Kariki, I believe there's a nursing shortage, but not like what is advertised. Ding, ding, ding. Like Nurse Scott said, we've been short for a very long time. Agreed. Agreed. We're going to look at that. I agree that there are not enough nurses working right now, but I would be bold. I would be so bold to say that there's not enough nurses right now. It's not that we're lacking nurses. We're lacking nurses who are willing to work in the conditions that they're being presented with, which then the, like everyone twists into there's nurses. They just don't want to work. Right. Have any of you been told that? Um, I've been told that if you go through the comment sections anywhere on, I feel like the internet you, and you will find like, Oh, there's not enough nurses. It's like, well, just suck it up. You should work in those conditions. And friends, that's not the energy that we are bringing into 2022. Okay. You don't have to suck it up. You are not an indentured servant. You do not have to work in a field if you don't want to. And they seem to forget that, which is really weird. And I wish they didn't. <laughs> Teresa Madison said, hello, the last year. I remember it, no shortage was in 1980 year three, the year I graduated from. I wonder if you had a difficult time finding a job and that's why it's so memorable. NW said nursing educator shortage. Maybe there's absolutely a nursing educator shortage because we don't pay them enough. So interesting um, about nursing educators is in a lot of States, so you have like regular faculty, right? At your nursing school where you hire people, they're full-time, they get the benefits, they get all the doodads. You can pay a lot less money to people if you just come in as an adjunct faculty and teach like one or two classes without having them be tenured and be like full-time employees. So that's what they offer a lot of nursing ad educator positions as where they come in, you're making like 15, $20 an hour. And they usually require something like uh, at least a master's degree, if not a doctorate. So that's why we don't have nursing educator. Edu educators. Wow. <laughs> we don't have any of them nursing educators. We don't have nursing educators because we don't pay them. We're going to see this as a very common thread that's going to pop up here. Nurse Scott said, I have read, however, that the real shortage is in nursing educators. There's another one right there too. However, we are graduating a lot of nurses still. I have actually, shall we just hop over real quick? We will get into the serious deets very quickly. Apparently let me find which page that we have. Okay. So I need to share this one and then we'll roll the intro, but we'll just like teach you with a little bit of information because I, I mathed, where's my phone? I mathed and everybody, obviously we need to, um, we want to share this. You're coming with me through my mental, 
my mental steps. So we have, um, I found in this article, uh, typical nursing schools graduate 188,000 new nurses a year, right? So everyone's saying, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, there's a shortage. Okay. So we're just going to, we're going to math this 188,000, um, thousand nurses a year. Let's round it down to, you know, they're going to graduate, but they're not going to, well, let's just be optimistic. Let's say they're all going to make it 188,000 a year. How long, how long do we think these nurses are going to work in the workforce? Let's say meh, like what they're going in when they're 25, we'll just kind of like round around like 25 and you're getting out when you're 65, right? So we have like 40 years. So 188,000 times 40, that should be how many nurses about we have in the pipeline, right? If we're keeping everybody there. So that's 7,520,000. Now, obviously not everyone is going to stay a nurse the entire time, but 7,520,000 is what we should be looking at, right? That's the number if we retained, um, just about everyone. And, um, so uh, let's see how many we are supposed to have currently um, in general, let's stop sharing that one. And let's see, I have a number somewhere and it tells me how many we should be having because it's way less than that. It's like 2 million is what we need in order to, um, two or 3 million in order to stay afloat, which makes you wonder if we have 7 million, 500, where the rest of these dear sweet people are going. And it makes you look at it and say, I almost wonder if it's not a shortage, if it's, actually <laughs> that we just don't retain people because we don't treat them well. And I believe that's where we will end up at. All right. Well, I can't find it, but we're going to find it eventually. This was the worst introduction ever. Um, but the number that it said we should have was like around two, like three or 4 million, I think. So we're losing like three or four, like more than half. We're losing more than half of what we retain in general. So, um, therein lies the problem. All right. Wonderful. We've solved the problem. Uh, stream can be over because we've solved the problem very, very quickly. Um, wonderful. <laughs> someone go tell the people, go tell the people that we have fixed the problem. Uh, you probably need to pay people better. You probably need to treat them like actual humans, um, you know, protect them in the workplace and so on and so forth. <laughs> Let's go there. All right. Let us roll the intro because we must, because I made it and we must appreciate it. And then we will start diving through some articles and looking at, uh, some of your comments. That's all. That's all it is. Just a real quick night shift has more fun. Okay. So let us see here. Um, we have, I'm going to go backwards just a tiny bit and catch up with the chat. Melody Nolan. Hello. Welcome to the stream. If you guys are familiar around here, you know, Melody, um, tangents make the stream unique. I love how you allow us to participate in the discussion. Even if we end up on a maze of subjects, it's great. Wonderful. I'm glad you're here. Melody and I are going to be doing a live stream this weekend, actually. So stay tuned for that. We're going to be talking all about chronic care, chronic health care from a patient perspective and things, uh, to just be aware of like an informative side from the patient's perspective. So she's going to be gifting us all of that knowledge. I will be posting a uh, question box on my Instagram and on our community tab. So if you have questions from a nursing or a provider standpoint that you would like to ask Melody of uh, like, what could I do better here? That's how I'm approaching this stream is how could I be a better provider or a better nurse for my patients with chronic conditions? What do you wish I knew? That's what that's going to be. So Lee, I will look, keep an eyeball out for that. And I will be checking, we'll be checking those and answering all of your questions. Also, Melody, thanks for being a channel member. Um, CK Medic, hello, hello. Another channel member. Welcome, welcome. And I saw someone else I saw. I think I saw Sophia in here. Um, if you'd like to be a channel member, you get access to all sorts of extra rambles. There's going to be some other fun stuff coming down the pipeline that I'm it's in my brain. It hasn't come out yet. Um, but you can become a channel member and, um, have my eternal love. Aaron says, Oh, Liz is feeling spicy today. Looking forward to this. Spicy can mean, um, derailed easily though. So <laughs> we're going to, it's going to be an interesting, um, way to go. Condition Genji says conditions and pay are major issues. Agreed. Fixed conditions and pay and things will be a lot better. They're not there yet. Okay. We understand that we understand it, but they're not there yet. Adrian, 
also a frequent flyer on our channel. If you've seen our free other streams, there's also a regional shortage of clinical sites. Yes. Uh, did you guys see the stream I did the other day on, uh, Indiana and how Indiana <laughs> It was like, all right, we don't have enough nurses. We don't have enough clinical sites. We don't have enough teachers. So let's lower the standards for everything. You don't have to go into actual clinical anymore. You can just do it in a sim lab. Your teacher can literally be like anyone we find off the street. Uh, none of your teachers have to be full time. Everything's fine. And you can grow your school as fast as you want. If not, you should catch that one. I will have my second opinion, link it down in the description below. And uh, it's interesting. But we don't have clinical sites because nursing is one of the only fields that requires itself to train itself, but for no money and without any accommodation and schedule, right? So that's weird. Other professions, you usually are either paid a stipend for like, hey, I know you're going to be teaching these new people, so we're going to reduce your workload or pay you. Nursing's like, no, <laughs> no friend, um, you're just going to do this. <laughs> you're just going to do this for free and we won't make anything any easier. Uh, nurse Adrian also said hospitals and healthcare sites that get Medicare funding should be required to provide clinical sites. I totally agree. So Medicare is what, uh, you know, insurance for typically patients that are, um, retired or have chronic conditions. This is how Medicare and Medicaid is how a lot of residency programs get funded. Fun fact. So med, med schools, um, like that's how they can have med students is through Medicare and Medicaid. And then through residency programs, residency programs are funded by Medicare and Medicaid. So doctors are trained, physicians are trained this way, um, but not nurses, not, not nurses. So tangent number one of the day accomplished. I agree, Adrian. I think that should be funneled that way, but nurses are not money makers. We are, well, nurses, I would argue are money makers. Cause if you have better nursing ratios, you save the hospital money. Right. But they don't agree. Um, they are spent like they're an expense. And so on the hospital's sheet, when they tally up all the costs, nurses come down as an expense and tis, tis a problem. Okay. So nursing shortage, have you heard, has your school, has your internet told you that, um, there's a nursing shortage. Let's leave a fun emoji, meaning yes, in the chat. If your internet has told you that there is a nursing shortage, mine did. Um, it's, the whole time I was in school, they were like, there's such a bad nursing shortage. This is the end of the world. Um, help. And uh, so all of us were like, oh my gosh, um, <laughs> we're going to be so valued. And I miss that very very naive girl who thought they're going to value me so much at my job because obviously there is a problem here. Spoilers. They, they, um, they didn't really. Um, so let's look, I did a Google search. Here's my very fancy Google search. I just thought I would get the pulse on things. LSU expands programs to STEM statewide nursing shortage. Just in the last day, in the last literal day, all of these reports, 62% of nurses in Maryland are continue, considering leaving their job as staffing shortages expected to double. Um, UF Colleges of Nursing receives um, lots of money, $3.6 million to help with nursing shortage. Uh, let's see, we have August 2nd, daily news, debt collapse, nursing shortage. That's that's just like a whole spewing sentence of like bad, bad, bad. One key step towards solving the nation's deadly nursing shortage. I wonder what they say. Oh, oh my gosh. This was a whole article. My mom sent me. We'll have to talk about this later. They were saying, um, uh, <laughs> a step towards solving the nation's deadly nursing shortage was, um, to change surgical scheduling things. They're like, I know what will solve this. You know what? It's not that we need to pay nurses more. It's not that we need to, re to reduce ratios. This hospital, um, where was it in Los Angeles? Uh, they decided that the way to fix the nursing shortage and make nurses less stressed and burned out was to make it so that elective surgeries were scheduled like more evenly throughout the week so that when patients went to the floors, it was a steadier like rate of patients. And I cannot express how much that is missing the mark. <laughs> I'm like, did anyone ask a nurse? It turns out, no, no one asked a nurse for this article. Um, and it shows. So, um, why aren't we involving people like nurses in these things? I don't know. That's what makes me want to go and run for political offices because I'm like this, this simply, simply will not do. 
we cannot have this. Okay. So obviously things are kind of a little bit of a problem. We acknowledge that the U S is having a nursing shortage. Okay. And it is leading to multi-million dollar costs. Shocker. Because if the people who are handling and working with the patients the most are not actual employees of the, like if they're constantly traveling, if you don't have people who work there all the time, you aren't going to catch the mistakes. Okay. This is why it is a public health crisis. Uh, goal of the stream to take away. Okay. Here's our takeaway point. It's not that this is a public crisis. Okay. I think we need to talk about it more in the fact that this is a public crisis, but also this is not that we don't have enough nurses. It's that we are doing a bad job retaining our nurses because remember we're graduating enough. We have like 7.5 million nurses that we're graduating. So why are they leaving? Um, there's many reasons why nurses are leaving. Uh, feel free to share if you are a nurse, why you left or considered leaving here. Uh, I know I left because, um, it was, I didn't like the schedule. I didn't like how, uh, with like in the hospital. Okay. So mine were superficial reasons, which we're also going to talk about super. Like I didn't like to work nights and weekends. I didn't like to work holidays. And then I just like found other interests in the career, but had, there been, um, I don't know, like, I don't know if I would still be there, even if like that type of schedule didn't bother me, but like, it's very normal to want to leave and go to a different thing. Moral of the story. Um, and then I left all of healthcare kind of all together at the moment while I figure out my life. Cause you know, all the normal reasons, um, your patients yell at you and are mean and no one can actually get the healthcare they need problem all going back to burnout. Right. I think most of us that have left, if you have left, um, have left because of burnout and because you, it, you needed to run away and go and feel better. Let me show you. I promise there's, um, <laughs> there's a point to these rambles. Um, so here's another frightening statistic, just because I think it's always best to scare you, um, before we get snarky and we will be getting snarky because we're going to be looking at some of these other, um, articles, but where's this one? Is it this one? Do, do, do. This is much more of a, a snarky feed. Okay. And then we'll be offering some hope. <laughs> okay. I promise. Also on Thursday, we're going to be a doing a whole stream with the usual panel. Whoever would like to come on uh, our panelists of like, would we go into this again? Would we go into nursing again? And I was the only one who said I would not. Uh, the All of the other, I think there were six other people who all said they would go into nursing again. So if you're watching this and you're like, oh my gosh, I see my future going up in flames do go come on Thursday, set your reminders. Um, while you're setting your reminders, go and like this stream. You just, it improves the vital signs. If you tap it an odd number of times, it likes that just do some compressions on it. It helps YouTube, the YouTube gods know that this should be shown to other people. Um, but we are going to be talking about that. So if you need some hope, go to that one and go to our stream. Um, second opinion. Can you link that one from last Thursday where we gave new nurse advice and we're going to do that one again at some point soon, because it was so popular. There were incredible people. Um, nurse Scott was there. Adrian, um, Melody was there. We had mama nurse. We had a ton. Um, Zan was there. There were like a really good smattering of people giving amazing advice. So go check out that one as well. Anyway, I wanted to show you this number. The U S Bureau of Labor and Statistics projects that 500 hundred thousand, um, nurses, seasoned nurses are expected to retire between now and the end of 2022, um, creating a shortage of 1.1 million nurses. Again, bad news bears. This is a lot more than you would expect to see in terms of like that many shouldn't be retiring. Right. So if we're graduating, just looking at the numbers about 144,000, you would imagine about 144,000 should be leaving every year, but that's not what we see. Cause everyone's like, peace, I'm bailing. Um, and in within, you know, any job, obviously people are going to leave, but by their second year in the workforce, 33% of nurses leave the bedside due to burnout. So that's just looking at the bedside. It's a third. So that's problematic. And you're like, well, maybe that's like a little bit biased and that, um, that isn't, you know, maybe that's, it's fine. I don't think that's the actual numbers, right? Okay. That's what I was hopeful for too. Um, until I found do, 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 do this fun article. Let me see how I can link it because it had other, um, mildly frightening information in it. 
share a window. Yes, please share. Perfect. Okay. So here we have uh, a sad, sad document um, from the Nursing Solutions NSI National Healthcare Retention and RN Staffing Report. Okay. Um, this was interesting. So they looked at over 3,000 hospitals all over the country to take a comprehensive survey in 2022 of, you know, nurses. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, healthcare is projected to grow 16% and add 2.6 million jo new jobs to 2030. And this is part of kind of, we now we have an aging population. You're probably going to hear that a lot, where we have a lot of patients who are now, you know, they're going to be getting older. We're getting really good at keeping people alive longer. And, um, it's going that way. Unfortunately, um, all the healthcare people are annoyed <laughs> because we're like, this is actually, um, I'm kind of, uh, realizing I, I don't, I don't love it. I'd like, <laughs> I'd like more options or for you to be nicer. So that's part of the problem, but most of the problem is we're making enough people. We just don't make them stay. So here are, let's go down a little bit. The great resignation is evident in healthcare never really ideal for some you to be experiencing something like that. So again, the problem isn't necessarily that we don't make enough nurses. It's the, well, it's twofold. One, it's hard to make them if we don't have teachers, but the bigger problem I would argue is the great resignation is evident in healthcare with hospital turnover, exceeding every previous study conducted by the national NSI nursing solutions during the past year, hospital turnover rate increased by 6.4% and currently stands at 25.9. So that's for the whole hospital. Nursing is much more depressing. Although hospitals did not meet their 2021 goal to reduce turnover. Um, I thought that was funny. So they didn't meet their goal. Um, and, but they are, they're going for it. They're like, you know what, this is a real problem. Um, we also acknowledge that burnout and turnover is a problem. So they know they're just not really willing to do the things to fix it because look, they're like, okay, we didn't meet our goal, but we're going to be really optimistic and, um, double down and we're going to double our goal. We didn't miss it at all. We actually, last year we went backwards by, um, 6.4%, but this year we are going to surge ahead, surge ahead, and we're going to increase retention by 5.9. So they're very optimistic. Okay. The hospital is very optimistic. Last year, RNs exited the bedside at an alarming rate and hospitals shed 2.47 of their R, um, RN workforce, like overall, which you might be like, oh, that's not bad, but that's, that's like a lot of your nurses. Right. Um, and that is just an average. If we look at some of these other ones down here, um, it paints a mildly alarming. That's for like a health system as an, and like overall, mm -hmm. if we look at actual inpatient, um, and I thought this was interesting. Um, you're going to see, here's our hospital turnover rates, right? Um, it's trending. It's definitely more turnover in these States that have, so you're up, you're at 28.6% in like North central 27.9 look at where these are, right? These are going to be states right here that don't pay you very well. In the Northeast, you're paid a little bit better. In the West, California, Arizona, you're going to be paid a little bit better. Um, and South Central, you're is generally paid like Texas, all of that. Um, you know, you're usually paid like a tiny bit better. But um, if it turns out there is a correlation between if you're paid like crap and uh, you are a nurse, who knew? Um, just a fun fact putting that out there. Uh, an overwhelming majority, 96.1% of hospitals view retention as a key strategic imperative and to a lesser degree is evident in operational practices. So it's, it's identified, but it's like just not something they're quite willing to do anything about yet. It's good. Almost all hospitals have retention initiatives. <laughs> in fact, close to three quarters have a formal retention strategy. So they have a plan to keep employees yet less than half are tied to a goal. So they kind of recognize that their retention strategies, this is the hospitals, are so crappy that they literally do not even spell out a goal, which is um, kind of like the, op like, how do you make a goal? What? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what we're supposed to do in nursing is make measurable goals so that we can decide if we achieved it. And if we didn't achieve it, then we can figure out how to fix it. They decided, no, they were like, we're never going to hit this because <laughs> we're not willing to give over the money. So um <laughs> we're going to come back. Um, we're just going to pull it back. Um, hospital turnover rate, um, retention. Exactly. Aaron, what exactly are these retention strategies? Um, fascinatingly, they did not, they did not detail it. I'm willing to bet it was something like, um, pizza parties, uh, and such <laughs> rocks, maybe, maybe that giving a retention bonus in exchange for <laughs> two years. <laughs> 
So like if you stay for two years, then you get a retention bonus. Okay. That's a better idea. I would be down for that. Um, I'm willing to bet it's not that though. I bet maybe after two years, you get a pin. You might get a pin, my friends. You may get a, maybe you could be eligible to pay for a better parking spot. Lola Noble said, how is the ner pediatric nursing field? So this is interesting. You are one step ahead of me. Um, and we will get there in just a moment. Uh, so they do recognize that the cost of turnover ha can have a profound impact on the diminishing hospital margin. So like we save money if we stay longer in jobs, but it's fine. Um, today over half of hospitals track this cost, which is good. Um, and then it goes into, I'm going to do a whole financial video on the cost breakdown, uh, I'm just going to pretend I'm talking to people who make large decisions um, because it literally saves them money to just pay more nurses, which doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. Um, so this just like um, this is what Lola was talking about. Registered nursing turnover varies by discipline. And this is something that I have experienced in my life as well. So I worked in med surge first and it was a hot dumpster fire mess. And then I moved over to peds and it was like Disneyland. Uh, we had peds tends to have much better ratios because people always want to have nice things for the kids. They want to have like decent, you know, nursing. They want to, it looks really bad if all of a sudden you're skimping on your children's hospital because the children, uh, people don't care as much about the adults. Um, I don't know if they say that out loud, but that is absolutely true. Like the peds hospital got so much better. If we look here, RN turnover by specialty, surgical services. So this is going to be someone who is working in the OR. Your ratios are a lot more strict, right? Because if you are like a scrub, like if you're the scrub nurse or the circulating nurse, you can't be in two operating rooms at once, right? So yes, are there, are they overburdened? Are they dealing with this as well? Yes. However, surgical specialties, women's health, pediatrics, burn centers, and behavioral health are all under this kind of like normal yellow line here where we say like, this is kind of normal turnover where you're losing like, um, what well, it's all higher in 2021 because <laughs> hello COVID, but comparatively, so we've seen a jump in literally all of them. Um, but if we're looking at surgical services, women's health and peds and behavioral health, the jump is very, very minimal because those units tend to have more stable, like, um, nurse ratios, right? You, if you're working in women's health, if you're working on labor and delivery, usually you're only helping one person who is like actively, like really, really in the, I'm having a baby stage, right? If you are working in, um, it looks like burn centers, people are over it. They used to be very happy with their jobs. And now they went from 9.8% turnover annually. So if you have a hundred nurses, like 10 left a unit a year, and now 21% are leaving a year because they're probably feeling the effects. They're probably getting all these random ICU patients with other illnesses and then they're doubling, like they're increasing their acuity peds. They're not going to want to really touch that. They're not going to want to like mm, do that as much. So these services where your ratios are much more likely to stay, that has a much lower turnover in a year, right? Then med surge, critical care, emergency room, tele telemetry and step down where we see rates over 25%. So this is telling us, and if you look, it's like 17. So all of these are going up by like 10%. So there is a huge, 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 huge gap where people used to be leaving, which it's obviously been a problem for a while, right? Like 18.7% of your floor leaving every single year, 20% of your floor leaving every single year problem. But now we're at like 30. Okay. So that's for your entire unit. If you have been there a year, you have a hundred nurses, 30 of them are going to leave every year. That only takes three years for your whole unit to be gone. Okay. Maybe like three in a couple months. And this is where the issue is. And yes, Lola said med surge ER and ICU can be brutal. Yeah. In those units, that's where you're seeing all of the things where it's like the patients are getting, you're having eight patients on med surge here. You can be stretched more thinly because you can't literally say, um, I can't have more than, you know, I can only be delivering one baby at a time. You, they're like, well, technically 
you can be doing all of this extra stuff, like, and they just keep piling it on. So this is where we talk about knowing your safe ratios, knowing when to say no to patient assignments, knowing, um, when you get a job, like Adrian said, we need support staff. When you have a 600 pound patient that requires four staff to turn transport texts and secretaries, ask in those interviews what your support staff looks like, because you can get as a nurse, a lot more done if you are not having to do every little task. But if you are your tech, like I was my tech on med surge, technically we had two techs, but they always, always, always got pulled to sit with patients who were confused or were falls risks. So we were our own. So then you had to go find three other people to get all of this stuff down. And Monte, um, Montenegro, Mont, Montenegal, um, is correct that your support staff is getting cut too, because again, support staff is on the budget. It's an expense. So that's not ideal. And W says I'm in med surge just over a year as a nurse, and I'll now be one of the senior staff. This is horrifying. Um, and this was my experience as well. I was a, um, charge nurse when I had been a nurse for three months period. Cause I was one of the most senior people. Uh, so this has been something we have been dealing with for a long time. And I think COVID, as we can see by this graph exacerbated it because it took a situation where lots of people were leaving and kind of pushed everyone to the edge and said, thanks for telling me how you really feel about me. I'm out. Uh, I don't need to deal with this garbage again not a nursing shortage, a shortage of nurses willing to put up with conditions that are unsafe for them in this environment. So we have more examples. Shall we look at more examples, friends? Um, Keisha said that oncology infuses fusion nurses are giving us 12 to 15 patients and we're our own techs as well. So that's a hot mess. Um, so this is another huge safety issue. If you are a infusion nurse, you're helping patients get like, um, chemo and other in like iron infusions, all sorts of infusions. You're watching them and doing their vitals all the time to make sure they're not having a transfusion reaction. How can you do that on 12 or 15 patients? This is where we start to see bad things happening. Okay. This is not what we want. Um, uh, let's see. Lauren DeTucci said it's actually objective because employee engagement and data of turnover speak how terrible data is to work in Florida, especially looking at cores measures and hospital grades, all data. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, and we have seen Lola, like Lola said, vitals are essential. We have seen legal cases now where nurses have been so overworked. They haven't been able to get vitals. They haven't been able to do their jobs. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, now you're getting sued. Yes. If you have that many patients, you're prone to an error. And we are seeing a lot of healthcare workers being prosecuted, um, now for mistakes, which is horrible. Uh, Kimberly Davis said at Banner hospital here in Arizona, my mother-in-law has been the pediatric oncology unit for over 15 years. And she said, it's a requirement for the nurses to have four to five patient and charge always has three. They said, um, we saw you doing it during COVID. So now we know you can, well, isn't that a delight? And I feel like that's been the attitude overall when that is such a money first mindset because can humans sprint? We can sprint, right? We can run kind of fast for like a hot minute when we absolutely have to, but to then say, I need you to run a marathon at that pace all of your nurses are going to leave. You're going to lose your entire nursing unit, which is what we were seeing, uh, within three years. And if you lose all of your nurses within three years, that is not safe. Um, that's a hot mess. So this article I thought did a good job of summarizing, um, a lot of, a lot of the feels, right? A lot of the feels, Nurses are not okay, um, why they're quitting their jobs and what it means for the future of healthcare. And again, we're talking about this to remind you that you can find jobs that are safe. Uh, there are, if you have a job that you like, that is, you do feel safe, please let the people in the chat know, because I feel bad. I want to talk about these things because this is a really big issue. And I just feel like the general public, I was at a baby shower over the weekend and having, um, uh, my mom was having a conversation with some people who don't work in healthcare at all. And she was telling them about this exact thing. Mm -hmm. They were like, Oh, the nursing shortage. My mom was like, it's not really a nursing shortage of nurses. It's that nurses don't want to work in these environments. And here's why. Um, and they were like, wait, what? Like they just had absolutely no idea. So that's why I want to talk about this is because 
people don't know because we're in our own bubble. So I'm trying to get out of the bubble. Um, but that also involves scaring new people and I'm not trying to scare you. I am sorry. I'm trying to open your eyeballs to what we're walking into, um, and equip you. That's why we're doing all those like other streams of like, here's what to say in these situations. Here's how to advocate for yourself. Here's how to spot a terrifying job that you should not accept. Uh, because one nice thing is nurses, we're in a spot where you're very needed, obviously, if we're in a nursing shortage. So you kind of have your pick of nursing jobs so you can be picky, which is great. So nurses are not okay. Why they're quitting their jobs and what it means for the future of healthcare. Um, this interviewed someone who uh, had worked in the healthcare for a long time. Um, and kind of like the effects of what happened with COVID and what the real situation is here all leading back to, we're not short nurses. We're short nurses who don't want to work in this environment anymore. Um, there is a lot more, um, mental health concerns, which I think is very, very valid. That's going to happen when you have burnout. Um, it highlights a lot of just like the, the difficulties of the job, which I think the pandemic really brought around too. right. Was like, it's hard to be, I think before we dealt with the normal things of like, um, you go to work and as a nurse and especially in those units that we were looking at earlier, right. Med surge, tele step down emergency room. Those units tend to have a very high, like moral injury, right. Because you see so much sadness, so much death, so many things that go really, really bad. And before you were kind of able to handle that because you were like teetering on the brink, right. Of like, I can handle this. And then the pandemic came and they like gave you even more patience, which made everything even worse. And then said, Oh, you have to work in these crazy conditions. Um, and so it kind of took everyone's mental health that was like teetering and just pushed it over the edge. Um, if more support, um, were given, this person had said like, when we're crying for help, maybe I could see myself staying. It's too late now. I just don't have it in me anymore. A lot of people are feeling pizza parties and pats on the back. Understaffing is one of the major causes of distress and moral burnout. Yes, it both increases the workload of nurses while also making them feel less valued by their employer. And I think this is something that I don't understand why employers don't focus on more is just like how to make people feel valued because you aren't going to feel valued if like, they focus on the dumbest stuff, right? Why isn't your white? Why didn't you write your name on your whiteboard? Why didn't you document your chlorhexidine bath by 2 AM? And you're like, well, I was like actively coding my other patient. They were like, you still could have like delegated that. And you're like, that's not really what was important at this moment. But to them, they're looking at their numbers. They're looking at their reimbursement. They're looking at hospital administrators are looking at this from such a business point of view because it is a business in this country. Um, and it's just very, very sad. Um, let me see more than 300, um, hospital ratios.com. I wonder if that's still a website after hearing horror stories, this nurse launched hospitalratios.com in late February with his two-year-old child Potter put together a basic website where nurses could share information about working conditions, more than 300 nurses submitted information on the first day was live. Only 16% said their facility had adequate staffing. Um, people are asking to nurses were, um, asked to take pay cuts when they canceled the elective surgery. So like, Hey, you don't really get to work here or they were furloughed. And then you're paid back by like, a huge caseload. Um, so I think it's just pretty clear that you don't feel like you're valued in your hospital. Um, when our nurse is depleted, the quality of care is just not going to be there. Yep. That's going to be true. Um, everyone's going to travel nursing. This is a huge thing. And now I feel like the hospitals don't want to pay the host, the traveling nurses, um, how much money they would like to be paid. And guys, it's just, it's a mess. So you can kind of see open travel nurse positions. So like they've been covering for the COVID surge. Ay, 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 ay. So this is how many nurses like a place in Montana was losing. Uh, the most recent labor. Um, let me see nurses in the next. She found a survey nurses in the next age group. Um, oh, this was interviewing like nurses. Um, I'm going to serve. I'm going to keep serving, but when it's over, I'm going to retire. So I think this was a lot of people. They saw COVID and they were like, well, I'll get us through this. And then I'm going to bounce, which understandable. Uh, which just the thing that boggles my mind about all of that is then all the people who, um, 
you know, like say like, oh, you couldn't hack it or like you're abandoning the profession. And it's like, if your job treated you where you go in and all of a sudden they're like, Hey, you know, that really busy day where you like really helped us out there. Um, you proved that you could do the job of two people. So now you need to do that all the time. Um, we're not going to pay you anymore though, even though you're literally doing the job of one and a half or two people, uh, your patients are going to, um, they're frustrated with the healthcare system. They're entering it because uh, they don't have access to healthcare a lot of the time. So they're coming in in crisis. So they're really mean and angry and grumpy. So they might hit mm -hmm. you. So you're also going to have to handle that. We really need you to document like everything so that we can get reimbursed by Medicare and Medicaid. Otherwise this visit wasn't even covered in which case we'll come back and we'll yell at you. And, um, can you come in on all of your days off because we don't have anyone to cover. So, and then people are like, well, you should definitely deal with that because in nursing is your calling. And can you tell how I feel about that? I don't feel great. Anyway, so that's my very long spiel of the true situation, which is um, <laughs> this wouldn't be a problem if we just paid nurses better. And um, yeah, Cassie said they don't want to give raises, but pay travel nurses $100 an hour. Yeah. And this is um, this is like now hospitals are trying to go back and they're like, well, we're not going to have as many travel nurses. <sighs> but now they just have bigger, bigger holes and it just doesn't make any sense. Um, I did want to just throw some, Oh, Melody has a question. As usual, I have a question for all the nurses in the room. What can we as, um, clients or patients do to help other than expressing appreciation and let you know, letting your supervisors know that they're superheroes. Um, so first of all, it is not your problem, not your job. I know you're coming at it from a very, very, um, like kind, I want to help way. Honestly, as a patient, the best thing you can do is complain about your concern over your safety in the letters you write when you go home. Right. So they're going to send you a press gainy survey, rate the nurses. Great. Just say they were wonderful. They were wonderful. Ask to talk to people within the hospital, like going up the chain of command, customer support or whatever people and say that you didn't feel safe because we, um, your nurse just didn't have enough time to be with you. And they said like, you could, um, you asked the nurse how many patients they had, and you do not feel that that is safe. Mm -hmm going back to safety, you want to bring up safety and that you didn't feel like you had enough time. You sought out the information, right. And that you were told, like, you can't have eight people. I can't imagine taking care of eight people who are dealing with the same thing as me. This makes me feel unsafe. Sharing with your friends and family to realize that this is a problem, right? Um, because like, and like Scott said, don't we really need CMS to advocate for us? They hold the purse strings. So the hospitals, one have to want it to be a problem. Um, and two, so that would be my first thing is the hospital has to feel the pain writing negative hospital reviews. That is surprisingly effective complaining and letting it be known, telling other people in your community, Hey, don't go to this hospital. They don't have enough nurses. And then letting people in the community know, Hey, it's not the nurse's fault. They're not doing, you know, X, Y, and Z it's look how many of the patients these nurses need. Right. Um, and then at the same time voting for, uh, when States come out with things saying, Hey, we're going to limit the number of nurses that you can be, or the number of patients nurses can be assigned to, like they did in California, vote for that, bring it up, um, be vocal about that. And really just getting the word out to, being the squeaky wheel, getting the word out to people who don't live in our bubble. Cause we all know it's an issue, but people outside of our bubble don't know it's an issue. Um, and complain, 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 complain to the hospitals, spread the word, leave horrible reviews, say, you know, and when you do it, be very explicit. Not that the nursing care was crappy. Okay. We're not going in that direction that you asked the nurse how many patients they had, and you do not understand how that would be safe because that is just too many. You didn't get to see them. They were running around. They looked frantic. Those things coming back to safety. Okay. Going back to safety. Um, we need Cassie G said, we need a federal bill for mandatory safe staffing ratios. Yes. Yes, we do. They'll never do it federally because healthcare is largely managed by States. Um, but we do need our States to get it together. <laughs> I don't know why only California, a lot of other States have brought it up and it has been shot down very shockingly. <laughs> so
so shockingly. Um, so shockingly. I feel like Alina DK says, I feel like every healthcare worker are not well appreciated. I'm still hoping things get better. Me too. I'm really hoping I've said this many times. Um, I feel like this next group of nurses are just like in a take no crap generation and they are, people are leaving. Like before, I feel like a lot, like for a long time, a lot of people were like, I'm going to quit. Um, and now everyone's actually quitting. And I think it's going to make the hospital actually sit there and be like, huh. And it's going to happen because they're going to get sued. Right. The unfortunate thing about all of this is it's going to come down to, the, hosp the hospitals are not going to be staffed appropriately. And in the next coming years, I think there's going to be a lot of lawsuits that are going to show up coming against the hospitals for like providing unsafe situations. And a lot of terrible things are going to happen to patients because hospitals and healthcare systems are not safe. Um, and I, that's the only way they're going to listen is by money. It has to financially affect them in order for them to want to like, actually do anything. You know what I mean? So we can write reviews. Um, we can, uh, like Adrian said, run for office. Um, <laughs> we just need to find, um, I would legitimately run in Pennsylvania for office. I just need, I looked it up and it was $20,000. I was like, that's $20,000 that I just don't have. Um, because yes, we really do want to do our best. We're just not handed the situation where we can actually do it. And the hospital does not care. It does not care that we are having a bad time and what we think they care about you, the patients, uh, because hello, <laughs> you're the ones that's paying them or their insurance companies are. So, um, Melody, you are the sweetest human. Your nurses are very lucky to have you as a patient. Um, but I don't want ever patients to feel like they have to fix this. Like, oh, what can I do to make my nurse's life easier? You're in the hot. You're if you are a patient interacting with the healthcare system, you are the one that should be taken care of. You don't need to worry about the nurses. Um, not hitting us is good though. We don't like that. Um, that's not very kind. So don't hit us. <laughs> Maybe don't scream at us. Um, but yeah. Um, I'm going to have, uh, nurse Adrian, we need to have a chat on here one time. Cause you know, so much about this and the nonprofits don't pay property tax. I want you to come on and like, just tell us all the things that are going to get us so mad about like, she's really into like, she knows all the business sides, right? Cause, um, nurse Adrian has an MBA and like, does the, um, we're going to have a chat one time about the unions and the, this and the that. So they, she knows all of this. So we're going to have a chat one time and we're all going to get so mad. Okay. So we'll have to like tease that in there <laughs> with like, um, other happy streams. <laughs> um, uh, my patient Lola said, my patients are so sweet at times. Yes. And I think all of us would agree that work in it, that, um, you do it for those patients for like, that is why people have held on for so long. Right. Uh, I feel like we're kind of in the same boat as teachers, right? We're experiencing a national teacher shortage. It's not that there's not enough teachers. It's that most teachers aren't teaching because they don't pay them well. And they hang on for so long because they all love their students. Right. I think a lot of us hang on because we love our patients. Mm -hmm. Uh, and yeah, I think that's, so that is a bright spot. I think if you ask any person in healthcare, they're like, Oh, why have you even done it for this long? Um, and as we'll see on Thursday where everyone <laughs> except for me says they would go back and do nursing again. Um, I bet it's mostly because of the patients and they feel like they've made a really big impact. Nurse Scott says nurse Adrian makes you so mad next on the nurse list show. <laughs> That'll be the thumbnail. It'll be like, let's get mad. And you'll all know what's coming. Melody said, thanks for your kind words. Advocacy is in my blood. Uh, it's involuntary. And I love to help those who are helping me. Yes, um, I do. You are a sweet human. Um, Starburst says, does anyone remember it being easier like eight to 10 years ago? I thought it was easier eight to 10 years ago. It was hard, but it wasn't like this. And I think I really do think the pandemic kind of just pushed everyone over the tipping point where it was like, I can cope. I can cope. I can cope. And then it was like, Nope, I cannot cope. Um, also there's 300 people here, which is like <laughs> double the amount, probably like triple the amount of people that are normally at my lives. Um, so thanks for being here friends. If you do like this live, just give it a little compressions and, um, tell the YouTubes that's mm -hmm. exciting. I'm excited. Cool. Um, oh, and captain Aiko, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, three month new grad med surge nurse here. 
We have heavy assignments plus very, um, patients with dementia as a 35 year old new nurse is just not worth it in the long run. Also, if you ever need me on a panel, I'm here. Perfect. Email me, um, in all caps (laughs) and we can chat. Um, I am always looking for new people on a panel and I love, um, it would be cool to have a, right now we have Zan, who's a new grad who comes on the panel as our new grad. Uh, and I would love to expand that because your insight is so different than, um, Adrian, Scott, and I were a little bit more cranky. Um, Vanessa's not cranky at all, mom and nurse. Uh, but I think she's just a unicorn of a human who doesn't get cranky, but, uh, <laughs> cause we've been doing the rest of us have been doing this too long and we're, we're a little cranky. So yes email me second opinion, put in the chat, but thank you so much for the super chat. Um, Monte Nagal said, I love this. So nice to share with other nurses. Yes. And that is what Tuesday night snarky after dark, whatever night shift has more fun. That's what we do on, um, Montana gal. Oh, oh, okay. Montana gal, like the state, um, second opinion is (laughs) texting me like, um, can you read, can you read? No, I cannot. (laughs) Um, not at all. I wanted to go, um, because yes, Crankosaurus, very accurate. (laughs) I feel like I want to make a shirt on my cricket. This is Crankosaurus. Now I need to write myself a note. Okay. To do (laughs) it's going my to do list tomorrow. Is this a life to do or a nurse Liz to do or a work to do? This is a, this is a work expense. I've decided the benefits of owning your own company. Um, then Joe's like, how, why don't you turn any profit? I'm like, well, <laughs> spend all my money on things like t-shirts that say crank, make t-shirt, crankosaurus, make t-shirt, crankosaurus. That'll be a Saturday well spent. Thanks, Adrian. Okay. I wanted to look at, um, so you would think, right. We know that this is a crisis because we don't have enough nurses because everyone is always leaving. Okay. So we're making, uh, a new, um, making new baby nurses, <laughs> um, <laughs> but they're leaving. Sorry. Um, Scott, that's your, <laughs> if you guys were here, <laughs> this is at the inception of late night with Liz. Okay. This is why we started late night with Liz because Scott was saying things in the chat. Like there's always more sperm. <laughs> Um, and <laughs> thus we are here. Thus late night with Liz started. Cause I was like, we need a place to capture all of this. Um, and <laughs> this is going to be it. Oh, enter to pre sing. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Um, I appreciate you. Uh, we'll put it towards my campaign fund. He said as a PA student, I'm having a hard time retaining stuff. Is there a way, um, to retain such a huge amount of info in such a short amount of time? Anyway, I can prove my memory. Um, so Uh, yes, I would recommend, um, (laughs) Scott says long story. Um, I would honestly, so I work, this is very biased because I work for them, but I work for them because I think their product is so cool. Go check out, um, Lecturio. So I work for them, like I said, but I work for them because they sponsored a video of mine. It's a online learning platform. They have a whole platform for PAs. It works by, it has a ton of videos. So you go through all the videos, you type in your due dates, right? For like your assignments, you're like, oh, I have to learn the GI system um, by two weeks from now. You type in the date that it's due. It will course map it for you. And it gives you quizzes every day that change based on what you know and you don't know. So it brings up the things that you don't know. And like, it'll type in sporadically, like, questions that you do know, but it just wants you to refresh. And then, so that gives you like the spaced repetition aspect of it, which is what your brain actually needs to really remember stuff. You have to see it a few times first and integrate it into a concept. Um, and then you can go through and make tests for yourself based on the topics that you actually need. Like you make a fake test. Um, and I have a discount code because I, um, work there. Uh, so let me find it really quick and then I'll tell you, but I legitimately love that product. Um, that's why I work for them because I was a nut and I wanted out of my NP job (laughs) and I was literally like, Oh, Hey, um, I, um, (laughs) I don't want to do this. Can you, um, give me a job? And they were like, 
Yeah. Okay. So there's a link that's going to take you to a nursing page. But if you go to, if you tell it you want to be a nurse practitioner, it's going to take you to the correct portal and you just tell it then that you're a PA and it should give you the discounted price. And if not, just let me know. So nurses and PEs and PAs, I highly recommend that. Um, that was like a little bit of a billing nurse Liz moment <laughs> that came in. Um, and go in there. Otherwise just small increments, uh, make sure you're sleeping and you're taking care of yourself. Um, Oh, Aaron. Perfect. This is turning into a wonderful infomercial. I'll have to tell them tomorrow. I'll be like, you can just, um, I will send you my hourly billing. Um, I love using Lecterio. The lectures are succinct with the most important information. Great for helping retain info. Yes. You can listen to it like a podcast. You can listen to it on two times speed. It has concept pages. It has cheat sheets. I like it. I like it. Um, do you recommend it for NP2? Yes. I recommend it for, they have an LPN, an NP, an MD, a PA, and an RN program. I recommend it for all of them. My code should give you a discount on all of them. And it's, um, I demanded the best code. I was like, I want the cheapest price that you ever sell it all year and minus $10. <laughs> And then they did it. And I was like, wow, if you go in with confidence, apparently they will do whatever you say. <laughs> I was like, oh, they're not going to do that. Picmonic is also good. I used Picmonic um, in NP school. Um, and they have like more memory mnemonics. Um, that's a great one. Um, very, very, very good. I'm having a hard time retaining orthopedics, clinical medicine, lecture topics. They have a ton of ortho go check out their ortho, ortho ones. And they put it in a nice way because then it's like, oh, this is what the actual environment I'm going to be learning in. Right. So second opinion, I left that in the chat. If you could link that down below, that would be bomb.com. Saunders NCLEX textbook is good too. Yes. Use your NCLEX textbooks to study for the actual tests when you're in school friends, because that will tell you what you need to know. Okay. Uh, second opinion says I need to, um, hop back on topic, but <laughs> there we go. We'll have a, before the school semester starts, hold on. I need to readjust. We will have a, how to study and survive. Okay. We'll get that. Um, we'll get that going. Um, let me she, okay. So you would think <laughs> we took a detour. Now we're back. Um, let me know if you would like a, my tips for school stream and we will do that. Um, let me know, um, with some kind of emoji or comment in the chat. Uh, otherwise <laughs> sometimes I have these ideas and then like, no, everyone's like, absolutely no. Lola Noble back on track. Thank you, Rachel. You have a friend. Um, Aaron, I see you. Um, we'll have a whole chat about it. Um, so back on track, you would think the big nursing to do's, right? This is more just me being snarky. Okay. We've kind of hit the point home that this is a problem. Uh, we need to, um, retain people, right? We've kind of hit that nail on the head. So now we're just going to move into snarky, snarky list mode. Okay. Um, and, <laughs> You would think that the powers that be would the big nursing organizations, right, would be like, hey, uh, we recognize that this is a problem, right? We see that this is a problem and we are going to we're going to fix this, right? We're going to throw everything we have at it. We know the problem here. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Sophia. <laughs> Brand. Hello, Sophia. Also a channel member. Thanks for being a channel member. You're the best. Um, you would think they would try to fix it, right? Do you think that they're trying to fix it? Or do you think the nursing leaders are being petty as hell and seeing a problem that is not even there? Which one do we think? Do we think they're trying to fix it and be like, hey, this is how we actually advocate to like change policies within Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement. And this is how we do all the things. Or are we being petty as hell? Let us see. <laughs> they're being petty as hell. Let's look. Um, so we have, um, let's go to the AACN fact sheet. Okay. Um, so the AACN is the American Association of Colleges of Nursing. So they are the ones that accredit your schools. Okay. They're the one, one of the accrediting bodies. So they look and they, they're who all the schools send their stuff to. And they say, yes, you can be a nursing school. 
they recognize that there is a nursing shortage. Okay, good, good. The U.S. is projected to experience a shortage of registered nurses that is expected to intensify as baby boobers age and the need for health care grows. So we're keeping people alive longer. Go us. Compounding the problem is the fact that nursing schools across the country are struggling to expand to the capacity to meet the rising demands of care needs, blah, blah, blah. The AACN is working with schools, policymakers, nursing organizations, and the media to bring attention to this health care concern. Awesome, right? We're on the right track. The AACN is the nursing leaders that be. They are coming in and they are going to swoop in and help with policy changes in nursing organizations and making the public aware. The AACN, how are they going to do it? I'm so excited to find out. We shouldn't be too excited. Um, don't get your hopes up. The AACN is leveraging its resources to shape legislation. That sounds very promising. What could go wrong? Identify strategies and form collaborations to address the shortage. That sounds great, right? The AACN has a ton of money, right? Not as much as the med places, but the AACN has a good little bit of money. So what are what are we doing to try to fix this, right? Are we going to advocate, like I said, for policy changes where we have better ratios? Are we going to do all of those things? Um, we go back over to the sad statistics. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, registered nursing is listed as among the top occupations in terms of job growth. Okay, so there's a lot of us, a lot of people. We have a lot of room for growth. That's great. The RN workforce is expected to grow from 3 million. Oh, here's where I found it. So there's 3 million people in the workforce. I knew it was like three to 4 million, but remember there should be 7 million. So where did the other 4 million go? So problem. So it's expected to grow. That's exciting. The Bureau also projects 175,900 openings for RN each year through 2029, which is good because there's 188,000 graduating every year. So that's not even enough jobs, but it's fine. Um, when nurses retire and the workforce exits are factored into the numbers needed in the U S so this right here, this is what I meant to open with. I just couldn't find the article. <laughs> Boop ADHD brain. We literally graduate more than we need. Okay. We need 175,900 a year. We graduate 188,000. So, um, <laughs> what are we doing with them? But alas, we don't make enough nurses. According to the United States registered nurse workforce, um, they posted this, they go by their numbers. Let us see. Okay. So here they're just kind of saying, yes, we have a problem. Um, now they're going to try to address it. Great. I'm like, what are you going to do to help me fix this problem? Nursing school enrollment is not growing fast enough. Okay. Um, the AACN reported a 5.1% enrollment increase in entry-level baccalaureate programs in 2019. This increase is not sufficient to meet the projected demands for nursing services, including the need for more faculty researchers and primary care providers. And you're like, oh, okay, well, that's fine. Why are we only focusing on baccalaureate programs like BSNs when we also have ADN programs, which are actually usually more helpful in filling the holes because they're a lot more flexible in their enrollment. Certainly, we're not going to blame all of this on the fact that people aren't going to BSN programs. Um, and then they do. They then go on to say that basically the problem is U.S. nursing schools turn away 87,407 qualified applicants from baccalaureate and graduate nursing programs due to insufficient number of faculty, clinical sites, classroom space, and clinical preceptors, as well as budget constraints. Um, almost two-thirds of nursing schools report um, faculty or clinical preceptors as a reason for not accepting all qualified applicants into their programs. So they aren't even looking at ADN programs. So they just don't even acknowledge that like they exist and they could come to the party, but that's some um, pretty big AACN energy right there is just like, um, rather than focusing on maybe advocating for more like low cost programs and getting grants and like increasing access. So like access to nursing school is a problem, right? That is a huge problem. So maybe the answer isn't to just look at BSN programs, right? That seems very odd that they're narrowing it down on that, but let us continue reading. Um, they go on and they say, you know, the population is aging, um, insufficient staffing in rising is raising the stress level of nursing, impacting job satisfaction and causing people to leave. Um, yes, we know that impact on patient care. And then it goes on and really drives it home. Um, that they quote some crappy studies, um, that it all comes back to, um, BSNs and they're like, so focused on, they have chosen to harp on the fact that not enough people have a bachelor's degree amongst all of this. Like they have so much power for good 
And rather than focusing on like, Hey, let's lobby for patient ratio, safer patient ratios. Hey, let's try to say, you know, um, start initiatives to help train people better in identifying jobs that are going to be really, really dangerous. The AACN is like, you know what we're going to do with our money in the midst of this crisis, um, attack ADN programs that graduate registered nurses. (laughs) That's a good use of our time. So this is our nursing leadership friends. This is why we need to get involved. This point is literally, this section is literally me just being like, I hate all of you, not you, not, not you. Um, the nursing leadership, because this is why we don't ever get anything done is because our nursing leadership is attacking our own profession and focusing on ADNs and the fact that they exist, uh, versus BSNs. Um, and fun fact, they quote in this article, this is a uh, mm, big feelings. Uh, they quote this article in the Lancet by Linda Aiken, um, published, published a study conducting in hospitals, um, found an increase in nursing workload by one patient increased the hospital dying. Yes. Um, and then they also found that research found that every 10% increase in a bachelor's degree nurse was associated with patient mortality by 7%. There are going to be studies like this that everyone will claim up and down until they're blue in the face. And these studies, if you actually look at them that say BSN nurses are better than ADN nurses are not good studies. Okay. I am not saying that you shouldn't get your BSN. It opens a lot of doors, but it doesn't provide a lot of actual value. And when you look at these studies that say BSN nurses are safer than ADN nurses, they are not controlling for the types of hospitals that these people are getting jobs in. Okay. Because it's more likely that BSN nurses are going to get into the magnet hospitals and the hospitals with more money. So then what they do is they say, well, this hospital with a lot of ADN nurses, which is probably a public hospital, very underfunded, had poorer outcomes than this hospital over here with all the BSN nurses, because only BSN nurses get hired at these magnet hospitals and they compare them. So I needed to go on that soapbox. Thank you for listening to me. Um, but that's what the AACN, the AACN doesn't look at that. They're like, no, no, I'm sure the study is legit. (laughs) We like these numbers because we get paid by all the BSN colleges to accredit them. So, um, we like them more. They can pay us more than the ADN colleges. So we're in their pocket. So in the middle of this crisis, we are going to focus our efforts on eliminating ADN programs and prioritizing BSN programs rather than anything else that we could be doing with our time. So, (sighs) (laughs) deep breaths, um, deep, deep breaths. Um, hello, hello. How are you doing? Um, we have our nurse midwife. I need to, um, let me see. So that was my, um, my feelings on that. Um, D Jones, Elizabeth, no ADN is awesome. So BSN, if you want to go for it. Yeah. We've talked about this before. I have nothing like, um, BSNs. So you have your two degrees that you can become a nurse with your ADN, right? Well, there's a lot more, um, (laughs) Clayton, I Clayton count back from five, calm down, Liz, calm down. Um, but yikes, this is what we're fighting against is everyone is just fighting within themselves and, um, yikes. Let me see. I had, I don't think the ANA had anything. The American nursing association had anything that was supposed to be helpful. Um, except saying that I'll bring it up. We can look at it. We can explore it together. (laughs) Where's the Xanax spray? We certainly need some. Um, yeah. Um, Mindy Meeks, the AACN does not even accredit ADN programs by as much, just a little, you know, so they're, um, they don't, they don't, they have such a vendetta against ADN programs. It is ridiculous. And it's so disappointing that one of our big nursing institutions spends so much of its energy attacking our own profession. Okay. And this is why med programs, like this is why, like with the AMA, the American medical association is so much more powerful than nursing because medicine doesn't agree all like a lot internally, but medicine sticks together. Right. And nurses have always eaten our own young. We've always attacked each other. And that is, we're never going to get anywhere. And that's, what's so frustrating. Cause it's like, if we just stopped fighting amongst ourselves and presented a united front, even if we bicker on the inside, if you look like, look at physician groups, the AMA, the American medical association, 
united front. They stick together underneath. They talk about each other and everything, but yes, nurse Adrian elitist does his finest nursing has forever. In my opinion, they get so stuck up about like titles and theory and like, this is how we've always done it. And this is better than that. They're so worried about comparing themselves to physicians and always feeling like they need to be in a rat race when really we're comparing apples and oranges here and they want to be like, well, this is me. Um, like we're better, we're valid. And there there's been a long history of yes, nurses have not always been like valued members of the team, but they're so stuck in trying to prove themselves and like adding a billion letters to our names and everything that we're missing the fight <laughs> is how I feel. I'm like, Arr. um, Risa says, I love this channel. Like, thank you. I'm glad you're here. Don't catch many lives, but yes, we need a united front. Thank you for what you're saying. Um, so yeah, yeah. Come on friends. Let's stop in fight. When I saw that the AACN had posted that I was just like the fire just like came out of my ears. Um, uh, Mindy Meek said an ADN education is the only program accessible for many people. Exactly. And they take the same NCLEX as BSNs. Exactly. And I would argue that they provide better care out of the gate than a BSN who thinks that they are like God's gift to the world. At least that's the ones that I've interacted with. And I say that as a BSN graduate, um, my ADN colleagues who graduated were in a much better place to do everything. And they also were much better at saying, I don't know how to do this. Um, please help me. It exactly right. Nurse Adrian, it further divides nurses rather than uniting doctors don't bash each other over credentials. Exactly. Um, and ADN is so much more flexible. Like Lola said, it is such an, a better, more accessible entry point. And those programs are a heck of a lot more competitive, which is why I don't understand why people make fun of ADN programs because so many more people want to get into an ADN program. It's more affordable. Um, Elizabeth Foreman and ADN is an associate degree. So to become a registered nurse, you can have so many different education things that all lead you to the same test, the licensing test for a registered nurse. And, um, a lot of the uh, places like to poo poo. If you get an associate degree nursing degree, which is a two year degree, um, associates degree versus a BSN or a master's. Um, and it's, all because they are getting paid by these schools and, you know, BSNs are going to have a higher tuition. And I found that my ADN colleagues, their school was so much harder. Um, and they actually kicked people out because they were like, Hey, this is who we have like lined up. If you don't want this spot, there will be another person right behind you who is going to fill it versus in a BSN program. Um, if you kick their kid out, mommy and daddy are probably going to be on the phone and being like, um, <laughs> look, I understand that Julie didn't quite pass. Okay. Like a 34% in the class is not like super great, but like, don't you think you could just make her pass? And, um, whoop, all of a sudden Julie gets through because, um, tuition is $50,000 a year. And the Dean of the school gets a little phone call and it's like, we're going to need to just kind of let her right on by versus if your incentive is much less monetarily mo like motivated in an ADN program, people get kicked out, uh, and <laughs> they need to keep going. So also more accessible. They usually have nights or weekend class. Um, and yes, um, no, <laughs> stay a teacher. Um, oh, we're talking about, uh, Good facts. Good. I'm glad that's what my experience as well. Lola is, it is a mm, nurse. Adrian said, Asians are usually public schools and there's no financial pressure to keep bad students. Exactly. Exactly. They had an impressive turnaround rate and, uh, ADN to BSN after 18 years and legit learn nothing. No, at least my employer paid for it. That's the way to go. Um, get your ADN sign a job at a hospital and they're probably going to be like, Hey, we want you to have your BSN. And then, um, they're going to, you know, they're, you will be like, okay, do you want to pay for it? You do a bridge program, you take the fluff classes and you learn about like theory and leadership and nothing that actually changes your day-to-day -day nursing practice. But Hey, Hey, uh, let me see. Dilly said, how do you organizations gain control over a group of people? You put them against each other and that way they don't unite against you. I think you just hit the nail on the head. Ding, 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 ding. Um, so then you'll also see, um, like other medical organizations, the AMA is very good at poking 
little fires within nursing um, so that we'll fight amongst ourselves. Hospitals know that if we're busy fighting amongst ourselves, we're not going to do anything. <laughs> like nursing organizations know that if we're busy fighting amongst ourselves, we're not going to do anything. We aren't going to be able to like rise up and be like, no, 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 um, no, no. Uh, Carol said, I heard a lot of places in New York city won't even hire an ADN. Is this true? I don't know about New York city. Um, particularly Lauren DeTucci said New York city will not. Um, I have worked in many places where they don't want to hire you if you have your ADN. So that's just something to look into. Um, a lot of the places I worked, they would consider hiring you as an ADN if you promise to get your BSN within a few years, um, because they want, what they want is something called magnet status, which is basically a fancy thing that they can say is for nursing excellence. And they get to put it on their website and it looks good for patients because healthcare is a business and they want the fancy plaque that says we're the best. Um, they pay a lot of money for it rather than actually paying their nurses more. They spend money paying magnet association to be accredited against. And, um, you have to have a certain number of BSN nurses in order to to get magnet. So all about the money. It all comes back to the money. Yes. Um, Adrian, uh, magnet is a huge pile of poo. <laughs> um, I think I accidentally, Oh, no, don't do that. Adrian, I almost blocked you on accident. I was trying to make you a mod <laughs> and I almost blocked you. So I'm going to stop clicking buttons, but I was trying to do something. Marketing and money. Yes, yes. Um, Ashley BSN said, yeah, the research class I had to take from my BSN really comes in handy on a daily basis as a dialysis nurse. You know, all of those procedures that you yourself are implementing. Um, it's not like you bring up these things and you're like, hey, this is actually better for patients. And you're like, does it cost more? And you're like, yeah. And they're like, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Go backwards. Um uh, Lauren DeTucci said, I disagree. I think nurse Adrian, a true hospital that is magnet and geared to, Oh, I think I'll let her finish her sentence. Um, Grace Jablonski said, I finished my ADN last fall, finishing my BSN now, and they have not given me a single test since my ADN program. It's all been projects and talk about ADN programs that are already covered. Good, 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 good. Um, what does nursing 101 class at community college program consist of? I don't know. Um, probably just like introduction to probably nursing theory. Cause we love talking about our old, where our, where our nursing foundations came from, even though we are like, not at all. We love talking about the old timey days and <laughs> when you're like this literally, um, <laughs> has nothing to do with anything I'm doing now, but it's fine. It's fine. Um, <laughs> because we all love group work WTF who thought of that crap for real and discussion boards. Don't you agree? Do you agree Adrian about the statement that I just made? Let me cite a random, random, random research study that I sort of found and then agree with seven other people and say, that's such good insight. Wow. I had never thought of it that way. Look at you go. <laughs> Oh, discussion posts. What a pile of poo. All right, friends, we will do, um, random, any questions, not that we haven't been, um, super on focus. Sorry, friends. Tonight's been kind of like all over the place and I just, I apologize, but we'll do 10 minutes of Q and a over whatever. So if you have any questions, um, I will get to as many as I can, I will try. Um, and we'll just do 10 minutes. Um, yeah, the discussions were the worst forced interactions. My biggest issue with discussion boards, like they could have been really, really good is if you just didn't have to excite anything, right? I want to just like be able to say, Oh, wow, that's interesting. Like I have never, um, seen that before. Like, let me ask a question about it and having to back things up. Um, having to back things up is it just kills the whole thing. Um, Carrie B says thinking of going into nursing, I'm a massage therapist. Just talk to a lot of people. Um, before you do that, see what you want to get out of it. Like what would your schedule be like before and after? Like, what can you not do now that you want to do then? Um, just really feel it out. I'm not saying don't go into nursing cause there's a lot of different, uh, 
lot, a lot of different avenues within it. And a lot of people like you'll see on Thursday still would go into it again, but just really like think it through. It's not as glamorous as social media would like it to be. Um, yeah. Elizabeth Foreman, how much math is actually used in the nursing profession? Just basic fractions, being able to, um, you know, divide things like, oh, you have a concentration of, um, you know, uh, 50 milligrams in one milliliter. I worked in peds, so I used math all the time because you were having to like convert things. Now your electronic health record will usually do it for you as well. So that's really nice. Um, but, uh, basic fractions, being able to convert things, being able to, so nothing crazy. You, um, you don't use stats. You don't use, it's just like basic algebra and you always have like a computer. So you always have that aspect of it. So don't worry. Um, Angelica, any possibility of this mess getting fixed in two years when I graduate, I think we're going to be in a better place in two years. I really do. I'm optimistic. I think there are some real firecracker humans in this next generation of nurses who are not taking, BS and who are walking in being like, they're like, the, they've seen the pandemic and what the pandemic did. And now they are like actually advocating for like better things and they're not taking the crappy jobs and they are not taking any prisoners. So I really do think that things are going to first crash. I do think there's going to be a crash and burn. Um, but I think in two years we might be able to be turning the corner. Does anyone agree? Do we think we can be turning the corner? I hope we can be turning the corner. Joe said, I start geriatric clinical in one month. Help. Uh, so um, we talked about this in the last um, stream. The biggest thing you want to do with geriatric clinical is just chat with people and they will chat back at you. And that clinical is going to go away like this. And the phrase that you can use is if you were not here hanging out with me today, what would you be doing? Um, and then they'll, that's all you have to do in geriatric clinical, my friend. They will just go. Okay. Geriatric clinical solved. They will they will be talking well past when you leave. Um, let us see. Um, Marissa Chapman, didn't you hear about the travel nurse that caused the crash in California? No. If you want to give me any more details, maybe we can talk about it in another discussion. Um, Lauren Kelly, do you have any tips or tricks to prevent burnout during a shift? Uh, do not pick up overtime and then you're only there for your three days. Do something fun and for you on your other days off. Um, and make sure you're like bringing little snacks, take little breaks, even if it means things don't get done. Um, I know you can't always take like, like I never got to take a lunch break, but do sit down sometimes and just like eat and hydrate. I kept snacks in my pocket. Um, obviously <laughs> you can tell I'm like pre pandemic. Um, I would keep like little nuts or like, um, jelly beans or, something in my pocket for like when I needed a little bit of a pick me up, but like little treats throughout the day. And then I found it very helpful to prevent burnout was my 4am oatmeal. Okay. I had that to look forward to after I did my 3am vitals, I would cozy down in my little chair with my oatmeal at 4am. And it was a great motivator to get me through that last hump. It also kept me full. So I didn't go home and immediately need to eat my body weight in food because that's what happens sometimes when you get home from night shift. Okay. Um, ba, 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 ba. uh, question Rissa said, is it safe for nurses to float? Pandemic has upped the floating game. I don't think floating is a good idea. Floating in case you're unaware is when you as a nurse show up to work and they say, Hey, you don't actually work on this unit today. You work over here. Working in places where you're not normally working is just going to up your um, mistakes. I think if you're floated in Liz's perfect world, if you needed to get floated, you would be a resource nurse. So someone who could just be like helpful, you don't have your own patient assignment. You could just pop around and like help with different things, but not actually be responsible for like an entire, um, you know, thing. Um, um, EDM summer said, are you still a nurse? Yes, I do still have my license. I am working for Lecturio as a nursing consultant. So I have my license, um, in the state of Pennsylvania. I still have my nurse practitioner license. I am just not currently practicing in a clinical setting. So I've just moved to a non-clinical nursing job, uh, because I was really frustrated with the world of healthcare mm -hmm. and, felt that I could not do the job that I went into this job field to do. Um, so I'm doing something different, which is a nice thing about nursing is there are a lot of options. Nurse Gabby said, what's the hardest class in a nursing program? And what is the hardest class to you? 
hardest class is theory and research because why? Who cares? I hate how nursing is so obsessed with theory. Maybe it made sense once upon a time, and this might make you mad. This might be an unpopular opinion. Nursing is way too up its own butt with nursing theory. Who cares? Who cares? We are so much more medicalized now as nurses. We are doing a lot more traditional medicine type things. We're not doing like, like everyone will always be like, oh, nursing is so like holistic and blah, blah, blah. And yes, it does have that component to it as its background of like, oh, I'm going to see the patient as a whole, but we no longer are founded in these concepts of like nursing theory. We're much more medicalized and like, Hey, this is this algorithm. This is this, this is how I'm going to treat this. When this happens, I see this. Yes, we see the whole patient. Um, but no, we don't need to spend a whole thing on theory. Theory was so boring. And I was like, this is useless. And then research, I was like, I hate writing papers. I hate all of this. So those were the hardest classes for me <laughs> in like med surgeon stuff. It was hard, but I was like, oh, this is applicable. I can see this. So your hardest class is just going to be what you're least interested in. And in order to get through it, remind yourself, if I fail, I have to take this again. And that's how I got C's. <laughs> I was like, I just need to survive. I just just need to survive. Um, would you, Elizabeth Borman said, would you recommend going from LPN to BSN? Um, as in like jumping to it? I don't see why not. Like, that's fine. Um, if you want to, um, like in terms of in general, would I go from LPN to BSN? I think you get paid a lot more money as an RN to do the things that you are probably already doing as an LPN. We, don't pay LPNs nearly enough. So in terms of money, I usually do, like, I usually do tell people like, if you can, and you want to make more money, bridge it. Um, but yeah, I mean, sure. Or go to get your ADN, like anything like that. Nursing student carry. Thanks for being a member. Um, isn't that what Redonda Vaught was doing covering someone's lunch? She was a resource nurse. So, um, I do have a whole bunch of videos on, uh, Redonda Vaught's case, but she was covering for a different nurse could not do something because he was covering for someone's lunch. So he had double the amount of patients. So he could not care for his own. And she ended up, she was a helper nurse. So like she was floating around the hospital helping. And so, yes, that is when it, the mistake happened was because it wasn't her patient, um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, Lauren DeTucci, how to become a nurse consultant. Um, well, uh, you can just talk to random companies like I did and be like, I really like your product. Can I work for you? And then they're like, um, I, uh, I, I, I guess. And then they hire you part-time, um, like on an hourly basis. And then you ask them every, uh, week or two, like, Hey, can I be, can I be an official employee? Can I be an official employee? And you keep asking them until they hire you. That might be really annoying and not the best way to do things. Um, but there are a lot of just look on job boards. Um, there are a lot of different, um, like just scope out, you know, just like see what's out there. Ask for jobs. Okay. The most of the jobs, like I got that job by asking for it. Most of the jobs out there that are like nursing consulting and stuff, um, they're not posted. You just kind of have to be like, do you, do you want a nurse? And, um, do you want that me to be that nurse and see what happens? The worst they can say is no. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? The worst they can say is no. Uh, I feel like that's my life motto. What could go wrong? All they can say is no. Like yesterday when I went around to all my neighbors and collected, plucked all of their, um, asked to pluck all of their recycling out of their trash because I compost it. I like put it through my shredder, which is very satisfying. And I either compost it or if it's like just plain cardboard, I can use it as mulch. Um, and yesterday that's what I did. I was like, Joe, I'm going to go, Joe's my husband. I was like, I'm going to go around the neighborhood and ask all of our neighbors if I can steal their cardboard. <laughs> He's like, uh, <laughs> please don't I'm like the worst they can say is no. None of them said no friends. I have so much cardboard in my garage. I am so excited. Tash 21 says any advice for someone wanting to leave outpatient for inpatient nursing. Everyone tells me I'm crazy, but my job is dead end. And I've, I've been in it for 10 years. Go for it. It's okay to change your mind. You can always go back. If you hate it, you're going to get new experiences. Every single job you go to, you're going to collect more one, you're going to learn more about what you like and what you don't like. You're going to learn a bunch of new skills. You're going to meet new people and network so that you can one day demand jobs of random people and be like, I want to work for you. And they're going to be like, you're great. Okay, do it. 
Don't even second guess it. Hop around to as many nursing jobs as your little heart sees fit. You're going to learn so much. Nurse Gabby, would you recommend working in a hospital or a smaller clinic when you first get your nursing job? Totes up to you. A hospital is going to expose you to a heck of a lot more. A clinic's going to be a way sweeter schedule probably. Um, just depends on what you want for your life. Do you want to work three twelves? Do you want to work more of a Monday through Friday gig? Do you like excitement? Do you want to, do you know, have any idea what you want? If you have no idea what you want, go into a hospital. You're going to learn real quick what you like and what you don't like. If you already know, I want to work in orthopedic clinic. Great. Go work. See if you can get a job in an orthopedic clinic. Clinic jobs are harder to find initially. You not that you can't, but you might just have to be more patient. So do you have a deadline of like, Oh, like when I graduated, my husband, um, we switched. So I went to school and then he went to school. So I needed to immediately find a job. I couldn't wait because we had student loans and I was the only one making money. Are you in a situation like that? Like you need to start making money. So you can't wait necessarily for a clinic job to come. Or do you have the, you know, are you still working a different job? Um, do you not need a job? You know what I mean? So like, there is no wrong answer here because you, my friend can always change your mind. Always, 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 always. You can always, always, always change your mind. Um, let me see. All right, let's do one or two more. And then I am going to, um, go watch a, I'm on a YouTube kick of watching people build log cabins in Canada for, by hand. So <laughs> I would like to go and watch that and crochet <laughs> and calm down some of this angst. Um, but yes, that is, <laughs> that is what we're doing. Um, and I've kind of gotten, um, Joe actually was the one that got me into watching videos of how to hand make log cabins. <laughs> Nurse Adrian gets it. I love those videos. Um, and uh, in Canada, Matt, we were like looking at each other at dinner and we were like, are we going to build a log cabin <laughs> somewhere? <laughs> Yes. Um, I can't wait until I retire. I am going to, it's going to be an interesting experience. All right, friends. Like I, I will be that person that you see in the news. And it was like Liz and her four alpacas herd of chickens and, um, squad of donkeys was found in the Canadian wilderness building a log cabin by hand. Um, and, making, oh, sheep. I have to have sheep for my wool, um, dyeing wool with berries and started a compound <laughs> and just providing free healthcare. <laughs> you can go see her up there in the, that's going to be me when I'm older. <laughs> just, oh, we'll just wait for it. Um, Kate Jackson said, come to Canada girl. I will, I'll come there and I will bring, I will bring, <laughs> I will build a log cabin. Um, all I want is um, <laughs> mini donkeys and mini goats. Yes. Um, there's a person that is looking at, there's a farm by our house um, within walking distance, like within a five minute walk. And um, someone is, they're selling their farm. And I know this is a very convoluted story. Essentially, we might be able to have mini donkeys within five minutes of us. Okay. And if that's not enough to make you come visit me, Adrian, I don't know what is. Okay. I don't know what is, um, <laughs> uh, start the school for training service alpacas. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. It'll be a little camp where you can come and, um, I will like help treat whatever medical condition it is that you need the service alpaca for. Um, I'll obviously have to train for that. And then you will like, I'll give you whatever healthcare. And then I also will probably train you to be a homesteader. Cause obviously I'll be doing that as well. And then I will hand you a hand knit sweater and it'll just be that I like spun that I crocheted after spinning the wool from my alpaca and sheep. So I really don't see, um, where this could go wrong, <laughs> where it could go wrong. Um, all right, friends. Um, thank you so much for coming and hanging out tonight. I very much appreciate you being here. Um, again, if this was fun, <laughs> I'm thinking of doing Reiki on horses. I swear I'm almost done with humans. I'm here for you. Let's join a compound. Okay. Let's Lola's coming. I always wanted to join a commune. We're going to go. All right. This is going to be great. Perfect. Um, let's go Jackie, uh, back to the task at hand. Yes. And boho. I saw earlier. She's like, this is boring. Um, 
this is the end. We're spiraling. We're done. Um, Yes. Um, thanks for coming out. Thanks for hanging out. Um, if you did think it was, you know, a fun rambly time, do like the video. If you want to be a friend of the channel, you can join these lovely people and be in a membership. I'm thinking of adding some kind of a discord server, something or other, not quite sure figuring that out. And that would have different member perks. But anyway, thank you so much for being here, everyone. I so appreciate you. I will see you Thursday where we talk about why I would not go probably be a nurse again, but lots of other people would. And always remember that you, my friends are more than enough. You are not alone and you can do hard things. Oh, Boho, you're responding to boring patients. That's good. I thought you were calling me out. I was like, that's totally fine because I, a few years ago, if someone was like rambling on about alpacas in a commune, I would have been like, I'm out. <laughs> thanks for being here. Um, thanks everyone. All right, friends, I will, um, I love your random statements. Thanks, Lola. I'll see you next time. I really should go. I want to go watch my log cabin video. All right. Bye. This is turning into ASMR. My sister will hate it.